Hi, it's Mr. Polachek, and today we're going to be talking about animal behavior or ethology. This is part of our ecology unit, and I'm going to start off um, by going over some innate behaviors. These are behaviors that are not learned. They're kind of like genetically pre-programmed into our DNA. I'll do a separate video at another time to go over learned behavior because these uh, innate behaviors are eventually going to lead us to one of our first AP biology labs with the animal behavior lab and the pill bug, but we'll get to that at the end of this video. So let's start off. We've got animal behavior or ethology, and we'll start off with our first innate behavior, which is instinct. The ability to know how to do certain things without ever being taught. And an example would be, like you see here, um, a baby nursing, um, knowing how to use those muscles to obtain food, or uh, a bird knowing how to build a nest, never having seen that done by a parent, or even the intricate uh, design of a spider web, where some spiders have to do this every single day, never having been taught, um, they just kind of know how to do it. And that's an innate behavior. It's uh, not learned. It's kind of genetically pre-programmed into their DNA to know how to do that. Here with imprinting, you can see some baby ducklings. Uh, when they hatched and saw the mother, they imprinted on that mother during a time that's called the sensitive period. The sensitive period is the time frame where imprinting occurs. And when those little baby ducks hatch and see their mom, they know, follow her all around, that they're going to be very well taken care of. Um, I can remember a time where my own children uh, got to see a baby duck hatch in an incubator uh, that I had. And uh, when they saw that baby bird hatch, um, the baby bird looked through the window of the incubator and saw my children and imprinted on them. So everywhere they walked and everywhere they went, this little baby duck uh, would follow them all around. So uh, that was always pretty cool to, to see. Uh, another example is salmon swimming upstream to return to where they were born. Uh, they kind of uh, imprint on the chemical surroundings where they're born. And during that sensitive period, they remember and they when they're adults and go swim in the ocean, they know how to return to that uh, same place they were born where they in turn breed. So that's, that's imprinting. The next one is a fixed action pattern. And if you look up above here, here is a stickleback fish. He, this is a male. He's got a red belly and he's going to defend his territory. And with a fixed action pattern, it's a behavior that's going to continue to exist as long as the sign stimulus is there. And for a red stickleback, uh, it's going to be another male red stickleback. When they see that red body, uh, they're going to defend the territory. So if we look here at this um, YouTube video that goes over it, you can see that they're going to look at uh, different shaped fish. Uh, here they, is their control. So you can see they use um, a plain fish, one with the same shape and a red belly, and then a different shape with that same red belly. So you can see the stickleback right here. Okay, they're going to put in this fake fish, and although it swims around terribly, it doesn't look like a real fish at all, uh, the way it swims. But this male stickleback is kind of like, all right, what are you doing? You're a weird fish, but I'm going to just leave you alone because you're just a weird fish, and you don't have any threatening colors because if you had a red belly, then I'd be angry. And so the male red stickleback just kind of hangs out. He's like, what the heck was that? But now, uh, if you look, here's the male stickleback here. And now we have the same shape. Oh, look at that one. He attacks, I got two, three, four, five. He attacks him a bunch of times. Oh, man. Oh, look, he just kept attacking him because he had that red belly. He feels threatened. Hey, get out of my territory. Here's a different shape now. Let's see if shape matters. We got a red belly. Stickleback's like, what are you doing? Oh, bite you once, twice. Oh, look out, three. Oh, he's going to bite him. He's like, you got a red belly. You must be another male. This is my territory. Those are my females. You got to go. And you can see there he attacks him again and again. So that's a fixed action pattern. The stickleback returns to just kind of hanging out once that sign stimulus is gone. So that's the stickleback and a fixed action pattern. Uh, let's move on to our, to our next um, example here. Here's another one, migratory restlessness. There are some birds that have an innate behavior where it's time to fly. We need to change our location. There's many different reasons why animals mi uh, migrate. It could be to find food, to find a mate. Um, 
food resources are depleted in one area and they're moving to another. Uh, and birds that we keep in captivity, maybe as pets, often go through this migratory restlessness. They start flying around a lot, or trying to fly around a lot in the cage. And uh, it's because of that innate behavior of migratory restlessness. Okay, the next one um, is taxis. Now, taxis is an innate behavior where you move directly toward or away from a stimulus. So moths would fly directly to a light or some creatures might move um, toward the dark. If they're in the light, they kind of run away. And I like to remember this as a direct uh, orientation by looking at a taxi. A taxi like taxis moves in a direct path. And that's something to keep in mind as we get ready to do our uh, lab for, uh, for class. All right, so taxis is a direct movement or orientation. So fish can orientate themselves uh, in a direct way, either upstream or downstream. So kinesis, on the other hand, is more of a scurrying. It's when an animal just kind of goes this way and that way to find the environment that's best or more suitable for it. Um, so that brings us to our lab. Okay, you guys, so now that we know a few things about innate behaviors and specifically taxis and kinesis, we can go ahead and do one of our first AP biology labs. And this is the animal behavior lab where we're gonna be using isopods um, or pill bugs or sow bugs uh, in this uh, experiment. And we can find pill bugs or sow bugs in any type of wood pile. One of their common names is called wood lice or roly polies. You've probably seen them before. So uh, if you take a look over here, we'll flake away some of the bark and see if we can find some of these guys. Uh, wood lice, roly polies, sow bugs, pill bugs. Let's go and take a look. Okay, I'll take some of the wood. I'll flake away some of the bark here. Okay, I have a few different logs that we can look at here. Okay, I'm just flaking away the bark. Okay, I'll try this piece of wood here. Okay. Okay, here you can see one right here. Okay, he's very light in color. Okay, you can see him going along there. Okay. The ones we're going to find are more gray in color. That's the ones we'll be using in the lab. Okay, let me see if I can find one of those. I'll put him back. Okay, we've got a nice big piece here. Okay, here's another one. All right. Again, the ones in lab are going to be more gray. But these are terrestrial isopods. They're related to lobsters and crabs. Um, but they live on the land. They do have gills. And one of the first things that we're going to be doing with them in the lab is just observing them. Okay, you can see them here. Okay, and we're going to be using this thing called a choice chamber. Okay, this choice chamber is really just two petri dishes that, set, that is uh, connected with a tunnel and they have the lids. We'll put a couple of um, pill bugs in here and we'll observe how they behave. Um, we want to make sure we don't disturb this too much. And then what we'll do in the second part of the experiment is we'll put filter paper on both sides and we'll make one moist and leave the other one dry. We're going to make sure that that filter paper is completely down, that they can't get underneath it. And we're going to see, after making a hypothesis, which side they prefer. Do they want to go to the moist side or the dry side? And is their movement controlled by taxis or kinesis? After we run that experiment and collect our data, we'll then do the third part of the experiment where you design the experiment, you test the variable that you'd like. We're going to test things like light versus dark, acidic versus basic, smooth versus rough. You design the experiment, use the materials in class to set up that experiment, collect your data, and report your results. Okay? So those are the directions for the lab using the choice chambers and our pill bug. And uh, that's it. Hope that helped. Good luck.